Hi, folks. I'm Maud Mosley. My pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a weekly series where I interview queer 2SLGBTQ plus bands and musicians to talk to them about their experiences, their music, and so much more. This week, I am joined by South London-based indie rock band Bears in Trees. Thank you so much for joining me. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Let's yeah, start. I'll start. I am Callum. My pronouns hands are he him and I play ukulele and sing and do keys in bears and trees. Rhymes nice. <laughs> um, I'm Ian uh, my pronouns are they them and I play bass and I sing and uh, yeah also in bears and trees. <laughs> my name's Nick my pronouns are he him I play guitar and write half of the lyrics in bears and trees um, and also High School Musical 2 is my favourite Pixar film. <laughs> I just thought that was important to put is out it there. Pixar? <laughs> uh, my name is George. My pronouns are he, him. I play the drums. I record everyone, do all the production, generally tell everyone what to do. Um, some people refer to me as band dads, but, you know, just depends <laughs> how I'm feeling. <laughs> Amazing. Just so you know, I'm I'm I write the other half of the lyrics. If you want to know the the the, the, the ratio, because Nick gave you a percentage <laughs> that we didn't don't have the rest of the information. The <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'm so glad all of you are here to join me this week, and we will definitely be diving into a lot of the lyrics on this week's episode. But the first thing I'd actually like to talk about is your social media presence, because I feel like that's really taken off in the last year or two. And particularly over on your Instagram, it seems very dedicated to storytelling, with many of your captions diving deeper into personal experiences, feelings, and band history. What does this kind of storytelling mean to you? Um, mm. I, um, That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. a good question. So usually it's me who writes the, um, the captions. Um, and I think it can be summed up. Um, and my, I met my friend for breakfast breakfast uh like two weeks ago and one of the first things he said to me he was like you know one day I want you to take all of your Instagram captions and put them in a poetry book because I will buy the heck out of that um which I thought was well sweet um but I think like uh we grew up with like Tumblr predominantly was the main I say Tumblr was like the equivalent to what tiktok is now for adolescents when we were younger and that had a big focus on kind of like just i guess pouring your heart out on the internet uh to the void not really assuming anyone's going to listen um just you know having a space that was yours that you could cultivate you could you know make it look aesthetically how you wanted you could customize your theme you, you know you had friends on there you had people you hadn't met um it was all very nice and communal and i think a lot of that kind of sense of Tumblr sensibility of like just being uh, like unauthentically honest because it's so far removed from your sorry authentically honest Authent yeah. authentically honest because it's so far <laughs> removed from your real self there we go no probably not no it's not not unauthentic um <laughs> but um yeah I think that's where it comes from and also stuff like like I know for me when I was getting into bands I idolized like even though it wasn't around when I was younger, like live journal in like my space, I was very much into the proper bands like before us, like Fall Out Boy, uh, Panic, ETC era, who like, you know, would have live journal accounts would just, that would be like an extension of their lyrics almost. And I think that's really important. And obviously Instagram, even though it's mainly a picture platform, somehow is the best place for that because you know, I, I just like the caption system. But yeah, that's that's my take on it. I Absolutely. love how you say ETC. It's so it's so funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, definitely. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear more from anyone else. I just wanted to ask if you found that, you know, does that authenticity over social media and through those captions, you know, affect the way that you relate to people who, you know, listen to and enjoy your music? Yeah, um, I think what's, what's what's really important about our authenticity and our striving for authentic 
authenticity and the storytelling itself um, is... Oh, my phone's gone to low power. Am I still here? Am I yeah. still here? Good. Sorry. Um, yeah, so the reason why we, we, we definitely like want to strive for authenticity and we want to tell these stories um, is because um, to us, it, it's not just about making nice music. It's about conveying this, uh, our lives and also our experiences in a way that is constructive for the people who are consuming those things. So that comes through in the lyrics, but we want to create a space that is so much more than that. We want to tell a much bigger story than um, just individual songs. Um, obviously, we want the songs to sound nice too. So it's, it's not it's not one or the other. It's, it's a combination of the two. But I do think it affects how we relate to the people online because I think that what we're trying to do is create this space where people can be uh, not just immersed in the stories that we love to tell about ourselves but also create a space where people can be honest about themselves and share their own story in a way that is um without kind of uh, worry of of being rejected or shamed or anything like that is being able to tell your story in an authentic way and create a space that allows others to also tell theirs that's i think what it means to us a lot a lot of the time yeah, definitely. It's yeah. really incredible the ways in which, you know, when we choose to share those stories, it can really empower other people to, you know, not only share those stories back to us, but also share their story with other people. And that's amazing. And I also mm -hmm. really appreciate the fact that you, you know, discuss the fact of how this stuff moves outside of your music. I know Lauren Denizio of Warriors was previously on Tunes Tuesday, and we were talking about how different forms of writing can be used to, you know, convey different feelings and different experiences. So I like the fact that you bring up the fact that like what you can talk about in songs and through lyrics is sometimes different to what you can convey through, you know, say an Instagram caption. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I love I love seeing the stories on Instagram. Um, there's like, I never know when they're gonna happen. As Nick said, you post them. So like, I'll just be scrolling for Instagram. Like, ah, oh, Bears and Trees posted. Ah, it's a catch the story. I'm going to read it. And they're always fun because we always say we were like friends first before we were a band. So often a lot of the stories come from like, you know, when we were at school or they're not always kind of at the same as when we were a band. And I think we're in an opportunity where we have those stories. A lot of bands don't because they only had stories from when they met each other and started a band. Whereas we have stories from way back when. And I think it, again, like Ian was saying, it builds the the narrative of the of Bears and Trees, which is both post and and pre bears and cheese. <laughs> Definitely. And then I want not to move into your music. I know we've been, you know, touching on it a lot. And your most recent music video was released a few months ago for your single Fresh Concrete. It showcased mm -hmm. a wide range of emotions while mixing splashes of color with more harrowing images like blood and broken mirrors. In this instance, and often through your lyrics, you're addressing experiences and topics related to mental health. So why do you believe it's important to showcase that duality as it relates to the topic? These are great questions. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, how, what was it? The duality of... Um, the, what, what, what duality do you mean? Absolutely. So Sorry. the duality of the imagery in the music video, as well as oh. lyrically, the way that you're, you know, talking about both kind of negative and and more hopeful feelings. Uh, it's basically is the the reason we 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 kind of say a lot of the time is life is really complex. Life isn't a situation of you have this. Um, sad thing that is all encompass all encompassingly sad sometimes you do have moments like that but ultimately most of the moments throughout life are you'll you'll have uh the worst moment of your life and then the moment after and you have the best moment of your life and you have the moment after and and the, there is there is laughter sprinkled in every time you're you're crying your heart out to a friend you'll start making jokes and it's 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 a lot of the time i don't even know if it's duality or whether it's just the 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 multiplicity of human experience in every single moment. Now, why we try and convey that through the videos and discuss it in the song, I think we are very committed to, to creating what we perceive as, as artistic 
um, forms throughout all the things we produce. And so I think what we we, we really try and do is it, we didn't want it just to be a music video. We wanted it to to really embody visually the experiences that we were talking about in songs. So especially with Fresh Concrete, uh, the lyrics are very much about kind of recognizing that the desperate pursuit of happiness isn't necessarily a positive one and uh, re recognizing that sometimes you have to take a step away from happiness to actually start healing from any mental trauma um, and so trying to convey that complexity of emotion and allowing yourself to feel that emotion in video form we actually have our friend um, Rakesh is the person who, who made the, uh, who, who kind of directed the video we kind of came up with the concept and he directed it fantastic job um, but ultimately I think he's really good at just not just using words and really trying to embody these these complexities in visual form and I think that we were we, we spent like a good half an hour just discussing the color scheme we were like with with the lighting person we were like does this does this is this the right yellow to convey anxiety or something like that but yeah yeah it's it's amazing to hear like how much you know thought was really put into every aspect of that is there anything else anyone else wanted to share about either those feelings or the process behind that music video <laughs> no pressure at all we are going to be diving a little bit deeper into that song so because alongside fresh concrete evergreen is your other most recent release it's paired up on flower through concrete and that title brings up this idea of you know pushing through barriers growth and hope which are feelings that are deeply connected to the lyrics of both of the singles and this looks like it's straying away from earlier work, such as say ramblings of a lunatic, which you know confronts suicidal ideation and grief among many other things. Alongside the mix of emotions that may be inspiring this change in tone behind the scenes, do you find there's a difference when it comes to recording and performing these songs? What do you think, <laughs> production? Um... Hmm. I guess when it comes to like the production side of things, we um, historically we've always done a lot of it alongside the writing process. And it's very much about like capturing those themes and letting them run through the whole sort of essence of the track um, in terms of the, the writing and the recording and the producing and, you know, layering things up and things like that. But then I think when it comes to live, I don't know if we I'd say live it's still definitely about those themes but it's also just about how we can change things up you know make it a bit different um and yeah I think it's live to me is very much about the feeling in that room at that time and making that great and not really worrying so much about the the complex things going on within the actual writing of the track yeah, definitely. I think when we played live, because we just did our first ever tour, like, you know, very recently last month, what changed it for for me every night was you never know what songs are going to get what reaction, <laughs> um, which is very interesting. So I think it's actually, it's more, when you play live, it's more influenced by the way the people watch you react to the song than the way y you feel when you play the song. Because all songs feel great to play. It's like they all come from a place of, just like you know absolute heart so i love playing any of our songs but especially when especially when there's a song that you you know you wasn't a single uh doesn't seem as popular on like you know social media or streaming or whatever metric you use to quantify your success and then like that's a song that people scream the loudest that's when the song changes for me and when i, I think like i start to think about it in a new way um but yeah i, I guess you know in terms of the the, the progression of, of the tracks. I guess because Flower Free Concrete, the, the idea, right, is, you know, it's like beauty coming through something very brutal. Um, and I think that was always going to be the, the logical next place to go after, like, ramblings and the entire I Want to Feel Chaotic Era. Because if, if you kept focusing on that, I think you'd run the risk of, you know, um, uh, romanticizing it to some extent. Uh, so I think, you know, 
people need to know that there is progression past that. Absolutely. Can you speak a little bit more to like those those concerns with romanticization, just because I think that's a really interesting aspect of music that a lot of people don't think about. And I think, you know, I think of a lot of bands in the past who have kind of been, I don't feel like accused is the right word, but that there has been concerns, you know, expressed with them before because of that kind of ongoing conversation through their lyrics. Do you mind if I speak on this one, guys? Yeah. Okay. I'll take that as a yes. Take it away. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So, I think we've always, so me and Nick grew up uh, less so Callum and George, but Callum, I think, was listening to a lot of emo music with us as well. But we grew up on, on a lot of um, quote unquote emo music. And um, you find that whilst it's incredibly cathartic to listen to um, and incredibly helpful to be given a language to articulate the pain that you've been experiencing um it does sometimes go without that second step of reflection and um not that i dislike any of this music i deeply love it it was deeply it part a deep part of my my kind of growing and healing and and, and journey but i think we always were very reflective of okay so is this a healthy projection to be putting out. I think even in our earlier music, um, there's one song that I was writing about uh, a, a breakup or not really a very messy kind of thing happening. And I wanted to speak very kind of t- to this deep emotional pain, but I, I preface it first by, by kind of going like, hey, by the way, I hold no hard feelings to this person. This is this is about kind of my, my feelings. And I feel like me and Nick have always said, you, you want, to be constructive with every kind of moment you make and i think rams of lunatic was probably the most somber song um that we've written and released in a very long while but i think it's it's not just i think what was what was really telling was when we were performing live um Rams of a Lunatic after I always was saying like hey when I wrote this song I was in such an isolated um disconnected space uh, that went that brought me to write this song and in this room with you know two 200 500 however many people I I see all these people singing these lyrics back and know that they connected to that emotion and reminding everyone that even though you have felt that alone and disconnected, just remember how not alone you are right now and how together you are right now. And we can be together in this this mutual kind of reflection of our pain. Um, does that answer the que- question? I think it yeah. does to some extent. <laughs> yeah, no, I think <laughs> I think that's really powerful and definitely relatable. You know, I think this is very much uh, a queer series, obviously, and, you know, run by a queer person. And I can think of myself and so many other people I know who also, you know, grew up emo, grew up, you know, around the emo (laughs) music. It was where we found that catharsis. If there were feelings inside ourselves that we didn't understand, you know, that's where we were looking for them and grasping through them and, you know, screaming or yelling or even like crying to that music was, was such a huge step. Um, So, you know, from there, I think it's amazing that you're thinking of, you know, how do we take that and how do we take those feelings that that gave, you know, us and you at that time? And how do we kind of push that forward so that we can make sure people are feeling, you know, supported and hopeful or understood and not feeling that isolation past that when they are confronting, you know, growth. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. It was incredible to hear all of your answers. If you want to check out more Bears and Trees, either the songs we've been talking about, the videos, the social media content, and so much more, you can head to any of the links below. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week on Tunes Tuesday, and Bears and Trees will be playing us out. There I was, a multitude of feeling. Fresh concrete in my mouth. Smash the glass, whisper into screaming. What you have to be sad about? There I was, a multitude of feeling.